I'd like to share a quote by uh, South Africa's first democratically elected president, Tata Nelson Mandela. He said, and I quote, like slavery and apartheid, poverty is not natural. It is man-made and it can be overcome and eradicated by the action of human beings. As long as poverty, injustice and gross inequality exist in our world, none of us can truly rest. Close quote. Ladies and gentlemen, today my talk is titled Nuclear Technology for Africa's Agenda for Sustainable Development. I was born in one of the villages in KwaZulu Natal, which is one of the provinces here in South Africa. The area had no electricity, so we used things such as paraffin, burning woods, charcoal, candles, and even cow dung to address our energy needs, such as cooking and heating our houses in winter. At the age of nine, I traveled three kilometers to get clean water, waking up at 4 a.m. as we had to get water from the fountain while it's still dark outside. I did my primary school years in the same village where I traveled four kilometers to get to school crossing the river. I was forced to do homework just before the sun set because at home we had limited candles. Why I'm sharing this story with you is so that you get to understand the life of a typical African. Even though for many of us in South Africa, the situation has changed, but for many Africans, it still remains unchanged. And now in the case of Africa, South Africa has majority of, uh, if not all of the above, and, and they have operated the nuclear research reactor Safari 1 for over 50 years. And this has placed the country among top producers of nuclear medicine worldwide. Also, Kube Power Plant has, has been operating since 1984, and this gives the country and the continent a competitive advantage in terms, in terms of capabilities. The world is talking net zero carbon emission by 2050, and that's according to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal. What is concerning is that many developed nations have placed the burden of addressing pollution challenges to African states, and these nations are persuading our leaders to phase out fossil fuels, especially coal, in, in, in our countries. And yet they have not done so in their own countries. And what is even worse is them dictating on the type of renewable energy sources that we should implement. And they do that through funding terms and conditions. And they usually uh, recommended sources are wind and solar. I have absolutely no problem with wind and solar. However, these technologies alone will not solve Africa's problem of lack of infrastructure and development. And while I'm, uh, I'm also of the view that the issues of climate change need to be addressed, but not at the expense of the poor Africans. It is unfair to put restrictions on the energy choices of poor countries who are continuously trapped in a state of poverty, socioeconomic challenges and underdevelopment.